Hello and welcome to this live interaction with me, Ashish Parekh. Now in a first, scientists claim to have uncovered observational evidence that frozen methane deposits in the Arctic Ocean have started to be released after determining that methane levels at the ocean surface were 4 to 8 times higher than expected. Now, the deposits are considered sleeping giants of the carbon cycle and could theoretically expedite climate change given that methane has a warming effect 80 times stronger than carbon dioxide over a 20 year period. Now, the 60 member team on the academic Keldish believe that they are the first to in fact observationally confirm the methane release which is already underway across a wide area of the slope about 600 km offshore and at, at, at least six monitoring points over a slope area 150 km in length and 10 km wide they saw clouds of bubbles release from sediments at one location in fact on the Laptev sea slope at a depth of about 300 meters they found methane concentrations of up to 1600 nanomoles per liter which is 400 times higher than what would be expected if the sea and the atmosphere were in equilibrium. Now, the United States Geological Survey has previously listed Arctic hydrate destabilization as one of the four most serious uh, scenarios for abrupt climate change. And to speak to us more about this, I have with me our expert for the day, Dr. T.V. Ramchandra, who's the coordinator of Energy and Wetlands Research Group from the Indian Institute of uh, Indian Institute of Science, joining us live right now. First of all, uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Ramchandra, for joining us live on this interaction. My first question to you is, what exactly is this Arctic methane bomb that everyone is talking about right now? See, this is uh, this refers to the methane release, mm -hmm. which are otherwise are hidden below the ice. Mm -hmm. Now, why does it get released is uh, because of the anthropogenic activities or mm -hmm. we call it as Anthropocene, wherein, uh, you know, with the enhanced human activities, either through the emission from the industry or through the deforestation, mm -hmm. we are uh, increasing the temperature of the our environment. Okay. In the process, you know, the, the there is a melting of the, the ice. This has led to the, you know, escape of uh, the, the methane or whatever hidden in the system. Mm -hmm. You know, due to Anthropocene, or during the Anthropocene period, what we have noticed is that whatever is hidden in the earth are getting released. Mm -hmm. See, when the wildfire happens, we see the emissions happen, which are the hidden carbon in the, our forest mm -hmm. get released to the environment. Or increase in temperature also lead to the, you know, higher soil respiration, which also lead to the higher uh, carbon emission in the environment. That's why uh, uh, these are called a sleeping chains, which otherwise are hidden in our earth. Mm -hmm. You know, we are aggravating the situation by our activities of uh, the emission. You know, this is a warning bell. What the Guardian has reported is a warning bell. Mm -hmm. And this has been reported way back in 2006. Uh, you know, if you go back to the, the journal Carbon Balance uh, and Management, mm -hmm. you know, the, by the Will Stephen, he has reported this way back in 2006. Okay. So unfortunately, our decision makers have not understood the implication of this kind of uh, the phenomena. Exactly. You know, with the cha uh, global warming, there are changes in climate. Mm -hmm. The impact of the changes in climate is, uh, you know, the recurring uh, instances of floods or the drought. What happened in Kodagu mm -hmm. or Kerala in uh, the Western Ghat is a clear uh, sign of the changes in the climate exactly. because of the global warming. See, also, also Professor, now, you know, while the scientists uh, who have come out with this discovery claim that their findings are preliminary, but the discovery of potential destabilized slow frozen methane raises concern that a new tipping point has been reached as far as uh, the speed of global heating is concerned. Because, of course, Arctic is considered ground zero for uh, the debate around all of these developments, isn't it? Yes, I agree with you. See, the methane also has a higher warming potential. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, if you take 100 year period, it is uh, the global warming potential of methane is 25 uh, times the carbon dioxide. Or if you take 20 years period, as you rightly pointed out, it is uh, 80 the time. Exactly. So that's where we need to take a note of this and try to see if we are worried of our uh, the next generation. Mm -hmm. And if we have to make sure that next generation has adequate water mm -hmm. and they do not face the crisis of, uh, you know, the floods or drought or the landslides. Mm -hmm. We need to give them a safe environment. That is where we need to bring down the emissions. Exactly. You know, this is what has been talked about in uh, 2015 at the uh, Paris conference. Mm -hmm. You know, the Prime Minister of country of our country talked about decarbonization, essentially through the uh, you know alternative to the fossil fuels. At the same time, arresting the deforestation. Mm -hmm. Now, though we have made a significant progress as far as the renewable energy uh, sources are concerned, especially 
solar energy. Mm -hmm. But as far as the deforestation, uh, arresting deforestation, we have not uh, the progress much. Still, exactly. there are uh, the deforestation happening. We are losing the forest at the rate of 2 to 3 percent every year. Mm -hmm. well, if I take the Kodago as an example, you know, the, in the last three decades, there has been a 50 percent decline in the forest cover. Mm -hmm. When we lose okay. the forest, we not only lose the ability to sequester the carbon that has escaped to the environment, mm -hmm. but we are also releasing more and more carbon to the environment, which otherwise are hidden in the soil. So that is where it becomes, uh, you know, the quite uh, significant uh, the study or the significant uh, the, the statement that has come out in the Guardian. Absolutely. We need to take a note of that, okay? Absolutely. See, also, also, Professor, one more point, uh, if I can add uh, right now. Some scientists have, in fact, come out and counter these claims of uh, the so-called discoveries and said that, you know, uh, there are climate feedback mechanisms to be worried about, but the supposed Arctic methane bomb isn't one of them. So this is just uh, something that has been built up, hyped up across the world. That is what some scientists believe in. Do you also uh, have the same opinion that this is something that is being hyped up and there are many other uh, things that need to be taken into consideration or should be worried more about as far as uh, the changes in the environment are concerned? See, everyone has the right to differ, mm. but at the same time, we need to understand the principles and then respect the, this one. That is where, you know, increasing temperature is certainly happening in the system. Mm. So, if there is a, the, you know, the feedback mechanism, then why are we seeing the frequent occurrences of flooding or drought in our country and also in the various parts of the globe? Exactly. Whether if you go to the US, you see how the, the, the Americans suffered because of the floods. So that is where we need to understand and try to arrest some of the emission that is happening. Absolutely. See, uh, I mean, uh, saying that there is a feedback mechanism and the uh, system is always in a balance, mm -hmm. that is not a valid statement. See, though the ecosystem try to attain the dynamic equilibrium, mm -hmm. but if you cross the threshold, then uh, mm -hmm. we need to pay the heavy amount. Now, people who are paying the heavy amount are the people who are in Kodagu or Kerala and the people who are in the vulnerable pocket. Mm -hmm. That is where, uh, you know, if we are worried of next generation, if you have to make the food and water security, mm -hmm. then we need to take this uh, kind of uh, study outcome or the wa as a warning and we need to implement the mitigative measures. So, rather than adapting the adaptation measure, I would say that we should come up with a appropriate mitigation measures so that we can arrest this kind of imbalances that is happening in the system. Otherwise, we are going to pay the heavy price. Okay? Absolutely. Now, uh, last question before we wrap up this live discussion, uh, Professor. This particular study, this particular discovery, we are talking about the Arctic region and the warning belt is being sent there. But does that warning belt also echo here in India given the fact that we aren't doing that great also as far as environment is concerned and such changes there could possibly mean that there are much more changes that are happening here. So the authorities need to take lessons from all of these developments that are happening across the globe and also look at the situation right here in our country. See, we have only one earth mm -hmm. and we have one atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Whether it happens in Atlantic uh, Ocean or whether it happens in Bangalore, it is the same. You know, we need to take into account the whatever is happening in the Atlantic, uh, this phenomena is called Atlantification. Mm -hmm. We need to take a note of that. And this is where, as the, the global citizens, we need to reduce the emission that is happening on priority. And the second thing is we need to arrest the deforestation. Mm -hmm. If we do that, we are also joining hands, giving the stable environment or the stable earth to our children. Absolutely. Otherwise, as I said earlier, we are going to pay the heavy price. I would say that let us be more responsible and uh, bring the stability in the system by reducing the emissions, so wherever it is possible. So we cannot uh, think only of the GDP. We need to think of the health of our children also. See, when the temperature increases, the disease vectors will start thriving. Already we are paying the heavy price in the, the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. A small organism, microorganism has made us to be indoor and all our economic activities have come down. So if we are going to continue to abuse the mother nature, I think we will have more and more such instances. Then permanently the people have to be inside home and we will not sure of tomorrow the whether we will be there or not. So if okay. we want to have a secure future, let us be more responsible, arrest the the factors that are changing the climate. Let us take the note from all these kind of studies and try to see how we can improve the situation 
so that uh, we will have a better tomorrow. Absolutely. One only hopes that lessons are learned before it's too late. Thanks a lot, Dr. Ramchandra, for joining us live. Uh, so that was Dr. Ramchandra joining us live from ISC, clearly pointing out to us the fact that it's not just the authorities, but also the citizens who need to take note of all of these developments. And yes, this might, a lot of people might argue that this is something that is happening in the Arctic region, but at the end of the day, it is still concerning Earth and we just have one Earth, one atmosphere and one change somewhere in some part of the world is going to trigger, uh, is going to have cascading effects across the globe and that means that even we could be affected. So lessons have to be learned before it's too late and before we destroy our Earth and our planet beyond repair. So do let us know what you guys think in the comment section below and also do not forget to like, share and subscribe to News9Digital. Thanks a lot for watching.